It's 12 o'clock. Hello, good afternoon, and welcome to the Star Media News. And coming up in the bulletin network challenges, plague day one of limited voter registration exercise, leaving scores of eager applicants stranded across the country. For the initiation process, the one that we're giving the forms to fill, we've been able to pass through that. But as we went inside, it seems the picture is a problem with the system. So we are unable to continue for now. Yeah. EC officials on the ground say the commission is working around the clock to address the challenge. But as of now, we're having a small problem. So that has delayed the process a little bit. But we are still working on from the head. So that we're hoping that in about 15 minutes time, everything will go to so that we continue the process. We are live to our reporters on the ground for the very latest. Also in the bulletin, banking consultant Dr. Richmond Tiahene classifies exit of Societe Generale as significant indicator that the country's banking sector is in full-fledged crisis. Since 20, 2014, our non-performing as asset ratio total to the asset has hovered between 11% and 24.9 percent as of December 2023. Still ahead, private legal practitioner urges Office of the Special Prosecutor to reinvestigate money laundering allegations against former sanitation minister after Yoko returned the set docket. They brought it back to him. He should go now, irrespective, and deal with this thing as he feels fit. As the information that he knows that he can't bring out, he should put his job on the line and deal with it. If they sack him afterwards, they sack him afterwards. We have details of these stories, including sports, all coming up in the next 30 minutes. Stay tuned in. News is coming to you live on Ultimate 106.9 FM in Kumasi, Empire 102.7 FM in Takradi, Zeps 95.9 FM in Zebila, Nisim 100.1 FM in Lamshao, My Star Radio in the USA. Also live on Facebook on Star 1035 FM and on starfm.com.gh around the world. This is Star 103.5 FM, Star News. Informed, in depth, in touch. You're welcome once again to the Star Midday News on Star 103.5 FM here in Accra. Coming to you live from our studios at the Platinum Place. My name is Na Didi Titi. Now, scores of applicants for the limited voter registration exercise across the country have been left stranded at various centers over network challenges, making it impossible to capture their bio data. The Electoral Commission's limited voter registration exercise began today, Tuesday, May 7, and is expected to last for 21 days, ending on May 27, 2024. Now, this exercise is targeted at first-time voters and those who wish to obtain a voter a card if they don't have any at all. Now, the exercise aims to register approximately six 623,000 first-time um, voters across the country. And uh, let's start from here in the Greater Accra region. Let's find out what is happening. Obed King Gaglo is at the EC's former head office where there is confusion over the delays triggered by the network challenges. Um, Obed, what more can you tell us? Obed, can you hear me? Right, not really, I can hear you. What is the situation at the moment? Right, so now the, the situation here at the former headquarters of the Electoral Committee is that, as we speak, now nobody, nobody has been registered as we speak. And that is because the machine for registering is faulty. 
And so when you come here, you see the lecture officers sitting idle, and those who have been here since morning also sitting down patiently waiting for the machines to be operated now before the registration will start. So nobody has been registered as a seat. And what is a challenge... What is the challenge being attributed for the inability to register anybody? Right. So we, we, we interacted with the district officers who are here. Uh, when you come here, there are four different constituencies that are doing the registration here. We have Ayahu West Wagon. We have Ayahu East. We are, have Ayahu North. We also have Clotted Poly constituencies who have all classes here to do the registration. Then uh, district officers tell us that it is a fault from the election uh, registration devices. They cannot really figure out what the problem is, but all they know is that the machines are not working as we speak, and so that's the reason why nobody has been registered so far. But the political parties have been expressing some concern over the delay, and I have here with me some representatives of both political parties, the NDP and the NPP. But first of all, I want to talk to the representatives of the NDC in the Ayawa North constituency. Uh, you are welcome live on Star FM. Um, we know that as we speak, nobody has been registered. How do you feel about it? Very, very bad. Very, very bad. And things look good. Well. We are very, very disappointed. It's disappointing. And we don't know what is happening. For EC as a commission to sit down for this thing to be happening, we are very, very worried. What was are you going to do as a political party? Since the whole day is being spent right now without any registration, what will be your next line of action? That will be the whole day. We are now in drop seven now. So we are still waiting to see. Maybe something will happen. But as a, we have our big men. So who will not take, they will direct us for all to do. But we are waiting to see what will happen. But right. So that's a representative of the NDC. Let, let's now speak to the youth organizer of the MPP. The, the, the organizer of the MPP in that constituency. Um, you're welcome to Star FM. Thank you. Good yeah. morning, good afternoon to your viewers. My name is Ophelia Mansiri, constituency organizer. I was interacted earlier with you when you said that we should give more time. But some people say that this is a ploy by the EC to disenfranchise some people from registering. How will you respond to that? Oh, it's not a big deal. It's not, it's not a good thing to say because... Electoral Commission as a commission, they know what they are doing. And this is an error, a, a, a machine error. It's not anybody that, that forceful say that, no, I won't allow people to register. No, that is not the case. You understand? So all of us are here to make sure everything will go successfully. That's why you see are so fast. And then make sure it's 20 days. Today is the first day. And if you start complaining like this, what do you want to see? Including weekends, everybody, all of us are here. We will make sure we do everything successfully. Right, so um, now that 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 was um, the U, the uh, constituency organizer of the MPP um, speaking to us about um, the ongoing limited registration exercise happening here at the electoral commission headquarters, uh, which has seen no registration so far. All right, thank you very much. Uh, that is um, Obed King Gaglo engaging uh, some of the representatives of the uh, political parties, in fact, the NDC and the NPP, in uh, at that particular center. He's also been speaking to an applicant. Have a listen to what uh, she has been saying. I think when we started around 7 a.m., we realized that the queue is not moving and the machine is not working. So I approached them that, what is the problem? The their explanation was it's a technical problem. It's a general issue that is beyond the, the official their control. So we are waiting that the system will restore back. But as we speak, the system is not back. And since 7 o'clock, we have not been able to even register a single person. So we don't even have a single card. So we, the people of NDC in Nayawas West, we are pleading with the Electoral Commission that whatever technical fault they are having, they should try as much as possible to restore it. Because people are in the queue, they want to register. Some have abandoned their work rush here as early as 5 a.m. to be in the queue to register. But we speak now, not even a single person has been able to register. Right. Away from that, we are being told that uh, some people who are able to register are not in the constituency. Is it 
comes to your notice and what you have to say about it? Actually, those saying that people are not from their, their constraints, we all know that when it comes to the electoral process, we have rules and regulations governing the process. If you know the person is not from the constraints, or the person doesn't reside within the electoral areas, within the constraints, what do you do? You pick a challenge form. So you had there an applicant speaking to Obed King Aglo at the headquarters of the, the former headquarters of the Electoral Commission, which is uh, serving as one of the uh, registration centers. Let's now take you to the eastern region, uh, where applicants also seeking to register the new job in South Office of the EC have been left stranded due to network challenges. Many hopeful voters arrived at the office only to find themselves unable to complete the registration process. As of 10.30 a.m., none of the initial voters who turned up had successfully registered. Let's go over the telephone line and speak to our Eastern Region correspondent, Kojo Ansa, for more on this. Um, so, Kojo Ansa, as of 10.30 a.m., none of the initial voters, potential voters, had been able to uh, successfully register. Has anything changed? Well, I mean, nothing has changed. And the municipal election officials are waiting for uh, the headquarters of Election Commission to resolve the, the matter because they said they cannot do anything here unless it is worked out at the headquarters of the Electoral Commission. So they are all waiting. Uh, but some of the stranded applicants have also left the center that they are going to find something to eat or also do other things and hoping that they will return. You have been engaging um, some of the applicants as well as the Electoral Commission's officer on the ground. What have they been telling you? Well, for the EC, um, they said because of the um, network challenge, um, all the uh, three teams that are on ground, that's one center or one of the teams um, in Kikokovia Technical University, and the mobile team, including that of the team at the uh, municipal office, they have not been able to register any of the applicants because of the network issue, because it's interconnected. So until it is resolved, none of them can work. So they are hoping that um, the headquarters will work on it and our registration will resume. But apart from that, the uh, Africans who, I mean, they are frustrated. For some of them, um, they had other things to do. Uh, that, that's the reason why they rushed the center, just so they register early for them to be able to go around their normal duties. So for some of them living, um, some are not sure they will return. Others who uh, say they will return to continue the process. And has there been any concerns about busing of um, applicants, registration of minors, among others? Not, not at all. I mean, um, I must say the awareness of the exercise is low. Uh, before even going to the registration center, I went to some of the electoral areas, um, especially railway electoral area. I engaged a number of applicants for people who are qualified to um, partake in this exercise. They said they are not aware. Um, so some of the assembly members were even urging the electoral commission to ask us where deploy funds, information funds to the community to announce to the applicants or people out there so that they will partake in the exercise. So for now, uh, participation is very low. However, EC is hoping that um, from the next day onwards, I mean, participation will increase. All right, Kojo Ansa is our Eastern Regional Correspondent. Let's hear from some of the applicants he did engage. For the initiation process, the one that we're giving the forms to fill, we've been able to pass through that. But as we went inside, it seems the picture is a problem with the system. So we are unable to continue for now. Yeah. So how has it inconvenienced you? What are you going to do? Maybe you have other plans? Uh... I have other plans. I even have to take my medicine because I'm not feeling well. Yeah. So I had to seek permission so that I go and get something to eat and take my medicine. So the inconvenience that um, they had really taking much of my time I'm gonna use it for other things yeah so when you when you leave this place will you return yes I'll be back I'm going to just get something to eat I'll be back please what's your name I'm Elion Elion I yeah. yeah. almost a almost a day somewhere I'm almost a day somewhere I'm almost a day somewhere how was the network? I'm the network in one half in some of them are like Okay. Now, Obi America has been 18 years. 
Ah, what's it? Why do you eat this? I made it. Who is younger than you? Me, younger than I am. Oh, okay. And you, who is younger than you? 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 So you have the um the two applicants that um. Uh, East Regional Correspondent Kojo Ansa did engage earlier. Uh, one of them was uh, telling us about how he's been there for a while and they are not able to capture their biodata. They are able to go through the manual process, but when it gets to the capturing of their biodata, they are unable to do so because um, they are not able to get access to the machines because of network challenges. Let's go to the Ashanti region and, and find out what is happening there because from what we understand, out of the four constituencies um, conducting the exercise in the EC's headquarters, uh, per the checks of GH1 and Star News, not a single individual has been able to register um, as of 11.15 a.m. We have on the line our Ashanti region correspondent Isaac Bediako Justice for more. Isaac, has anything changed since 11.15 a.m.? Well, now, so far, now the system has changed. They are now uh, been able to do some registration. Um, the last time I checked there, in the next two minutes, uh, two minutes ago, they have been able to register three people. That is the Ishaeso constituency. I will engage the constituency chairman for the NDC for Ishaeso, who is monitoring the exercise here. Um, he went in so that he can brief us what the situation is. And the meeting that they held with the electoral commissioner, uh, the director of Ashanti, what he gives them. Um, chairman, you you're live on fire FM. Yeah. What has been the experience so far? What has the EC communicated to you? Yeah. Uh, as uh, you already know, we came here in the morning and we had a challenge of network problem. And uh, the number of people that came around became stranded, including those of us who are playing supervisory roles. So it took a long while. The network just came in some 10 minutes ago. and. As we speak now, it's that we've been able to register five people. So, so far, this is what the EC has said. They, they told us that it's a nationwide problem. We are here, Shaiso, Bantama, Mesha North, and Mesha South. We are in a one perimeter. And uh, we have this challenge. So, we thought that it was fully restricted to this. So, the EC was told us, I know. Uh, it's a challenge nationwide, and they were uh, working uh, assiduously to rectify the challenge. That is a technical problem. So I believe that now that they have started, we just hope that uh, the the internet wouldn't. Uh, uh, I mean, there wouldn't be any disruptions again. So we are hoping that uh, things should be okay. Now I've seen that your openness, the MPP bringing in people to come and register. The NDC is also bringing in people to register. Why have you taken this responsibility upon yourself? Yeah, you know we are stakeholders in this uh, game. I mean, uh, we are all about uh, let's say nine electoral areas. So within the electoral areas, sometimes they appeal to us that because they are doing it at the district offices, sometimes they complain that uh, they wouldn't have transportation to go. So if we can assist. So as a major stakeholders, uh, we try to also assist in bringing them so that they can come and register. If the registrations were done at the, let's say, the electoral areas or at the branches, that one wouldn't have had this problem. But because it is restricted to the EC district offices, that is how come some of these challenges are coming. But I believe that this is how it has been done all the time. Because the previous ones we did, if you remember, the NDC, we proposed that we should do it at a lesser area so that a proximity six, it will be convenient for the people. And they, we held this, you know, we, we did a whole lot of noise about it, but it didn't materialize. This time around, there is a consensus that, okay, fine, we in the urban areas and all that, you know, it will be doing at the district office. But there are certain areas that they will send the machines to the electoral areas. So if you see that's uh, Bantama, people have seen the empty people who brought some people from Bantama in a bus, uh, quite a number of people. They say that they are only assisting. And uh, the NDC, too, are bringing in bits and bits. But the point is that the people you are carrying, you don't know their mind. And all they want to do is to get their, their car. That's all. The rest is that after that, we have to talk to them. Are you also doing the advocacy in the, in the electoral areas? I've seen the MPP moving van 
to some of the communities, advocating for the people to come and participate in the registration exercise. The NDT also did some nothing. So when you come to the ISO constituency, you know, we, 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 we bought myself and the, the MPP chairman, you could, you could hear him talking behind, like we do things together. That yes, if there is a bus and we think that it has to go to Sokoba and Letra area, we also do that. We tell everybody that there will be a bus so that they bring them. At the end of the day, we are only assisting them. The most important thing is that you shouldn't bring someone in who is now up to 18 years or someone who has already registered and you want to bring that one into. So the advocacy is done by both parties. At the end of the day, we are also playing a role to ensure that we begin the democratic process. So that is what we are doing. Thank you very much. So that is Ernest Afayam, the NDC Consensus Chairman for Asia. All right, Isaac, and thank you very much for giving us that update. That's our Shanti Regional Correspondent, Isaac Bidiako Justice. And we spent a good amount of time bringing you uh, the update on the situation with regard to the limited voter registration exercise. Uh, primarily, major of the areas, network challenges have plagued the exercise, leaving many um, put applicants stranded. But the latest we're getting from the Shanti Region is that a few minutes ago, they were able to get connection to the network, and so far, they've been able to register some three uh, people. Let's switch our attention to issues relating to the banking sector and the recent exits of some multinationals from the company. Well, banking consultant Dr. Richmond Etiahene has described the planned exit of French bank Société Générale from Ghana as a significant indicator that the country's banking sector is in full-fledged crisis. Now, despite claims by government officials that the banking sector is robust because of the 2018 banking sector cleanup, Dr. Tetuahene thinks otherwise. According to him, most financial institutions, particularly indigenous ones, are struggling due to the current economic challenges. He spoke on State of Affairs on GH1 television last night. Since 20, 2014, our non-performing as asset ratio total to the asset has hovered between 11% and 24.9% as at December 2023. Well, if you use this to test the resilience of the, the sector, it is a complete not resilient. Because there is a literature written by IMF staff, Detmar Kuntz versus Dietrich in 1998. He says that in the banking sector, that has more than 10% non-performing, can be described as a fully-fledged banking distress or crisis and consistently we have come from 11 up to 24 averaging 16.97 percent so when people talk about this resilience one measure of your resilience is about your non-performing because it has impact on your solvency there is a correlation between your non-performing the bigger your non-performing the worse your solvency rate is Unfortunately, this is what has happened to some of the banks. The best thing we have to do is that we need to look at the, the bank strategy to help them to grow. But, but also, be, basing them on a good corporate governance system and robust risk management systems and effective monitoring systems so that and they should have independent board members who would think clearly and not people go to sit on the board and they will tell you as the chairman was saying they themselves don't have anything to say everybody sing the chorus after the chairman and that is what the problem of the state banks because i am governance i am a corporate governance specialist who have treated some of the banks and that is what i have seen now, he also says the current challenges in the banking sector is evident that the 2018 financial sector cleanup didn't yield the expected results. If you look at the financial sector cleanup, I don't think we got the best out of it. The reason why I'm saying is that we could have been a good bank buying a good bank, refencing the bad banks, and getting people to manage it to turn it around with the same amount of capital. But without necessarily closing it down, people lost their job. People lost everything. But it hasn't actually, I can tell you from the where, what I've been doing over the years, 
it hasn't actually helped us. Let me give you an example. In 2019, when the GATT came in, everybody thought that the GATT was going to lend money to the bank at a reasonable price. Well, you'll be shocked. You'll be shocked. You see, the amount of money they gave to them and the cost of that money alone is killing the banks. I'm telling you. It's killing the bank. If you saw Prudential balance sheet, it's open. You saw the losses they made. It's part is coming from. You see, if you're giving somebody subordinated capital, you're not expected to put a, 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 a cost of, I mean, like a, like a, a, a bond. You had the banking consultant, Dr. Richmond Itia Henny. And that's it for that story. Let's bring you the very latest in the world of sports. And uh, Jones Aji is here with the very latest. Good afternoon to you, Jones. What's in sports? Good afternoon. And the Champions League is back this evening. Borussia Dortmund will be taking on PSG. But of course, before we get to that, let's start off from the GFA, where former Ghana Football Association Vice President George Afi has responded after having his appeal to the courts of arbitration for sports against the GFA dismissed. The veteran football administrator appealed to the body after getting disqualified from running for the presidential seat of the GFA in the 2023 GFA elections. In a statement released by Afri, he expressed his acceptance of the decision and extended his gratitude to all who supported him throughout the time. In the Ghana Premier League, Accra Lions missed their opportunity to go second after their 0-0 stalemate with Adriana Stars yesterday at the Accra Sports Stadium. The game was possession dominated by the Lions and they created the most chances, but the Adriana defense was up and doing, with goalkeeper Inusa Masawudu making crucial saves. The draw means Samatex now needs nine points to win the Ghana Premier League. And finally, in the Champions League, this evening, PSG will be looking to overturn a 1-0 deficit against Borussia Dortmund to make their second-ever Champions League final. Dortmund, who has never won at the Parc des Princes, need just a draw to qualify for the final. And that game is at 7 p.m. That's all for sports. My name is Jones Aji. Thank you very much, Jones, for the very latest in the world of sports. Uh, let's now switch our attention and bring you some other stories. And private legal practitioner Kwame Jantua is urging the Office of the Special Prosecutor to reinvestigate allegations of money laundering involving former sanitation minister Cecilia Abinadapa. Now, this is as a result of the decision of the Economic and Organized Crime Office to return the docket on Cecilia Dapa to the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Now, Ioko, upon advice of the Office of the Attorney General, decided against the initiation of money laundering investigations into Cecilia uh, Dapa, citing failure by the OSP to establish evidence of corruption or corruption-related offences. Now, speaking on the Breakfast Review segment of GHD on a sister station, GH1 Television, Kwame Jantua dared the Special Prosecutor to put his job on the line and ensure the truth on the matter is uncovered. If the president can write a letter and say, I'm, I'm confident that you'll be exonerated, and you say, my dear, shouldn't the Yoko themselves go and do the investigations themselves? Mm. Can they do it? Well, they said they can't go fishing. Why can't they go fishing? Because if you refer to us, we need a letter Why to stand Why can't up. they go fishing? Somebody has brought the case to you. Start afresh. When the money was being handed over, when the court said the special recruiter should give the money back to Honorable Dapa. Yes. Where was Yoko? Were they not interested in the case at that time? Are you telling me Yoko is not interested in such cases? Is that what you're telling me? They should have been there. As it was being handed over, they should have seized it. Did they? Look, nobody can tell me that there are no unseen hands in this thing. Nobody can tell me. Because if there were any private person, they would come heavy from that person. Mm. Yoko says they are returning the docket that was submitted to them to the OSP because they need more information so you know what? Led to stand on to do so, further investigations. So you know what? That's what they are saying. You know what? The OSP should put his job on the line and investigate this thing. If in the end he is removed, he's removed. Mm. He should go now. They brought it back to him. He should go now, irrespective, and deal with this thing as he seems he feels fit as the information that he knows that he can't bring out. He should put his job on the line and deal with it. If they sack him afterwards, they sack him afterwards. Because there's more to it than meets the eye, unfortunately. You have the private legal practitioner, Kwame Jantua, there.
Now, just before we go, state prosecutors are set to file a fresh charge sheet against the two men who have been arraigned for impersonating the Member of Parliament for North Stone, Samuel Okujitu Ablakwa, following latest discoveries. According to the prosecution, further investigation have discovered that the accused persons are involved in more offences, with the NDC's women's organiser, Hannah Bisu, and Thomas Ampemnyako, MP for Isujaman, as latest victims. Now, they have pleaded not guilty to, for, to six counts. Uh, for allegedly defrauding unsuspecting Ghanaians and having uh, been granted 50,000 Ghana cities bail each. And that'll be it for today's edition of the Star Midday News on Star 103.5 FM here in Accra. For more news, do log on to starfm.com.gh. My name is Nadi Diteti. Thank you so much for your company. Good afternoon.